This is Bitluni and today I'll be testing a battery system that totally changes how a simple grid tie solar system works. This video is sponsored by Zendur. As you might know from the videos I did in the past 5 years, I tried a lot of things to reduce my power costs using solar. Considering the fame affordable grid tie solar systems gained in the past years, also known as Balkonkraftwerk here in Germany, I was even an early adapter. Probably that's why I was approached by several companies in the recent time to test their new systems. Zendu with their battery system SolarFlow was especially interesting to me, so that's why I agreed to do this review. For disclosure, I get paid for my efforts, but I have to return the system after my tests. So, how does the system work? A typical home solar system that you can purchase already for around 600 bucks has the benefit that you can just plug it in and you don't have any extra installation costs. But the problem with those systems is that you can only produce power when the sun is shining. The legal power limit for such a grid tie solar system is in Europe 800 watts. So in the best case you will reduce your power consumption of your home by 800 watt at noon. But if the base load of your home is only 200 watts for the fridge and the Wi-Fi router at this time, any excess is lost as the energy provider won't pay you back anything that you feed back to the grid unless you jump a thousand hoops and get a special contract for that. Even then the payback is really small. The worst part is that most people are at work at noon, so at peak production we have minimal consumption. This is where a system like SolarFlow comes into play. It's basically a battery buffer which is plugged between your solar system and your microinverter. So you don't have any extra installation cost since you are still not messing with the grid. The benefit is that you can decide how much to feed to the grid and the rest will be stored in the battery for later. So the store charge can be released in the evening and the night when you are at home and need it the most. There are more sophisticated features, but more on that later. With a promotional price of 839 bucks currently, it's really challenging anything out there. So let's unbox it. Nice. The system consists of the main PV hub and a battery stack. That looks cool. Battery stack because the batteries can be easily extended by just putting another one on top of it. Each of the batteries can store 960 watt hours. The cases of the units are both from durable metal and IP65 water and dust proof rated. So it can be installed on a balcony or in a shed. I left it even in light rain by accident and it didn't complain. There are some chunky cooling grills on the PV hub and no fans. I like that because it means the system is completely silent. The system not only has all the necessary certifications like FCC and CE, but seems also to be TÜV certified. They are so confident about the quality of the product that they give you a 10 years warranty. Checking the manual on that, it's important to keep the undamaged packaging, fully charge the battery after the purchase and at least once every 6 months. Just make sure that you get the panels first to get the first charge within a week. The hub has 800 watt of dual input and up to 1200 watts single output. Since most inverters in the range of the legal 600 to 800 watts have dual inputs, they included solar Y connectors and all the cabling needed to hook it up properly. But before installing it, I need to put the solar panels on the roof since I just moved in the new home recently. These new panels certainly look fancier than my old ones. I have this overgrown shed with a flat roof next to it. That might be an easy place to put the solar panels on. My old garage flat roof setup also worked flawlessly for 4 years. At some point I will put it on the roof of the house, but let's keep it here temporarily for simplicity. A typical Balkonkraftwerk would just consist of the panels and the microinverter that you directly plug into the wall socket. That would already start producing power for my home if it wasn't for the really bad weather. Ah. At least I managed to put the panels on the roof before it started to rain again. Next, let's install the solar flow. I attached the IoT antenna, the Y cables and plugged the battery cable in first. Before plugging it between the panels and the inverter, you need to finish the installation process first. 
The Zendur app can be found in the app stores and is not some sketchy, unsigned, sideloaded thing. I created the account and continued with the installation. You simply select your device and follow the instructions. I'm very pleased to see that you have the option to operate it over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. If you're concerned about your privacy and what data is sent to the cloud, you can choose Bluetooth. I however want to operate it remotely with the cloud, so I pick Wi-Fi here. Now that the device was set up for the 600W HOMEIS microinverter, I could connect the panels and the microinverter to the hub. In this view, we can see the solar is producing 43 watts and the battery is discharged at 256 watts to provide around 300 watts to my home. Since I need to fully recharge the battery first, I change the discharge limit to zero. This way the battery is prioritized and only once it's full, the remaining solar is fed to the grid. There was also an update available, so I tried to install that using Wi-Fi, which failed. Trying it over Bluetooth, it showed the battery level was too low to do that, so I left it charging first. With the rain and overcast weather, that might take a while. After a while I checked again and it seems in the afternoon these overgrown bushes might cast shadows on the flat roof, so I took care of that. If it's overcast you don't have any hard shadows, so it's hard to determine if the panels are shadow free at all times. Uh oh, okay that went wrong. On day 2 of Overcast it finally managed to recharge fully and I could start to explore. During the first charge the battery calibrated a few times to determine the maximum charge. On this power graph we can see how the battery was consuming the whole solar for the day except the last bits. Once it was fully charged, the solar went to my wall socket. Now I want to test the full discharge at full 600 watts supported by the whole miles microinverter. It's midnight, so there is no solar intake. Next morning I checked and the battery was completely discharged after 1.5 hours at 600 watts. The app even says it provided 885 watt hours to the home. This day the weather was certainly better, but I never got more than 300 watts of solar in. There was something wrong. Checking the panels again was my facepalm moment. The hard shadows revealed that now almost September the sun was lower than expected and this huge tree oh, no. was basically jeopardizing our tests. The tree needs to be trimmed, but how I developed my jungle here is a topic for another time. A quick fix to move the panels to the roof of the shed did finally the job. Look at this, almost 500 watts instantly. Sweet. That way the battery will recharge in 2 hours. I tried to set the discharge limit to 200 watts, which would be the easiest setting to cover the base load of my home. But for some reason it just went full 600 watts. That worked before, so probably just a minor hiccup in the app. Since you don't want to control the output of the system manually, there are other options to make the life easier. The battery priority mode is a simple option to refill the battery during sunny hours. There is also the smart matching mode where you can match the consumption of your appliances measured by a smart plug. That can be useful for fridges, Wi-Fi routers or even your gaming PC in the evening. I don't have the smart plug here, so I want to try the appointment mode, which is interesting in other ways you might not anticipate yet. In appointment mode you can set times where the output is changed to a different setting. In the regular case that would mean that you set it to discharge a little bit more during the morning coffee, then just enough to cover the base load over the day while you are at work, that way the battery can recharge during sunny hours, and in the evening the output can be increased again when we are at home. This way almost 1 kilowatt hour can be saved a day per battery pack. Even more if the schedule would contain more than a cycle a day. Looking at my test results, 1 kilowatt hour would not carry all my base load for a day. Each pack adds another 600 euros to the total cost, but compensates way faster for the initial cost of the PV hub. 
The current promotional price reduces the cost of the hub dramatically, so it might be convincing to take one battery first and then expand it later using the savings on the power bill. If you want the maximum cycle count out of the batteries, there is an option to not fully charge or discharge them. That can really double the life of your battery, but it also reduces the total capacity even more, so the compensation for the initial battery pack would take even years. The more sophisticated method I want to use is to schedule the battery discharge to optimize for hourly power prices. I talked about my power provider before, it's quite new to Germany, but it seems to be really common to have hourly power prices uh, all over the world. So my project was to try and recharge a battery during hours where the power prices were really cheap and discharging it when it was expensive. But the difference between the highs and lows was only around 8 cents and that's not economical for batteries. Using power from solar which is free and storing in the battery is a completely different story. And with the hourly prices I can set the discharge to zero during those cheap valleys and discharge even more during the peaks of the costs. That saves up even more. There's no direct sender integration in the TIPA IoT ecosystem that would sync that automatically yet. But there is a sender integration for Home Assistant. But this is a topic for another day, since this is all the time I got for testing for now. My conclusion is that these battery systems are filling a gap, making those home solar systems really adjustable to your needs. It's not only making you more independent from power price fluctuations like happened the recent years, but you're also doing the grid a favor, distributing the solar power more evenly, which benefits the whole society in the ecological transformation. The Zendo solar flow system is really convincing with the build quality. It's waterproof and completely silent, which I love. You can use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which is fair. The app has some options to keep the batteries healthy. And you can adjust the charge and discharge times to your needs. I only experienced minor hiccups with the update and the discharge setting once. Other than that, it fully fulfilled my expectations. The stackable battery is a nice idea to start cheap and expand later. However, I'd start with two packs right away to cover my needs more efficiently. I hope you found this review informative and I'll keep you updated about my solar experiments. Thanks to Zendo for sponsoring this video. Please check out the links in the description if the system is interesting to you. And big thanks to all my supporters which really helped keeping me afloat during the transition to my new home. More interesting projects are coming soon and I see you next time. Bye!